herpes viruses, like all viruses, lack the genetic capacity to replicate on their own. They must parasitically appropriate a host cell's products for replication. Replication, the process and how it affords opportunities for intervention. Often the host's immune system is able to maintain suppression of a latent virus or neutralize a de novo infection. But if the immune system is compromised, viral assembly can begin. Viral assembly is a complex process with several steps. A few of those steps provide opportunities for antiviral agents to arrest replication. Herpes virus penetrates a host cell by first fusing with the cell membrane. The hydrophobic interactions required for fusion are important because they can be susceptible to chemical inhibition or blockade. After fusion, the virus releases its nucleocapsid and other proteins into the host cytoplasm. The nucleocapsid is transported to the nucleus where it docks at a nuclear pore. There, the capsid is uncoated and deposits viral DNA into the host cell nucleus. In the nucleus, the viral genome complexes with host cell machinery and viral DNA expression begins. This can be broken into two phases. Initially, proteins necessary for DNA replication are synthesized. Two of these, DNA polymerase and thymidine kinase, are important therapeutic targets. Viral genome replication begins, and then a second round of proteins used for structure and other tasks are synthesized. At this point in the virus cycle, interferon A and B, which respond to double-stranded RNA, are usually induced. However, there is debate on whether herpes viruses are good inducers of or responders to interferon. Finally, the progeny must exit the cell. The replication and egress of virus particles are generally cytolytic. Some of the late proteins that herpes viruses create, though, can keep the cell alive so more progeny can be created. Infection begins with just one virus particle in one cell, creating this replicative chain. Urgency of timing. Even with this complex assembly, a virus-infected cell can release hundreds to thousands of infectious progeny at a rapid pace. The time course for herpes replication varies from about 18 hours for herpes simplex to about 70 hours for cytomegalovirus. The need for timely intervention is evident.